what age do you associate a heart attack with? Late 50s? Late 60s? I'm about to meet a young man called Jem who had a heart attack at 36 years old. Yes, 36 years old. His story is a testament of how you can recover from such a tragic life incident and still live life to the full. If you're concerned about heart attacks or you have a family member that has had a heart attack, listen to this inspiring story in the next in the series of Lean Mind Body Stories. Hi Jim. Hi Ken. I have pronounced the name correctly, yes? Correct. Great. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us. Before your life-changing incident, you were quite a fit person, would you say that? I would say that. Uh, I used to run three, four times a week. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's quite often. And, and how old were you? I was 36. So you were reasonably fit and, and you were young. I was. Feeling good and... I was feeling very good. Lots of yes. life yep. ahead of you. And something happened to you that you don't normally associate with someone as young as, and fit as you. What was that? I had a heart attack at 36. Wow. You had a heart attack at 36? That's correct. Do you have any idea why it happened? Um, no, there's never been a reason given uh, that categorically explains what happened on that day. Um, it was just something that sometimes happens and you need to get over. Wow. So just, just, just guide me through the, the, that day, that tragic life-changing day. So I'd been running for a while, uh, for quite a few years, um, felt quite fit, very active, diet was good, um, decided to push myself a bit further and signed up for a triathlon. Uh, I was training for the triathlon, then one morning I woke up and I didn't feel too great, almost like uh, perhaps coming down with a cold or a flu or something like that. Um, but to any event, uh, I decided that I wouldn't go training that day. Up until then, I was training six days a week, nine training sessions over six days. Um, and that was swimming, cycling and running. Woke up one Sunday morning and I wasn't ready to go out for a cycle that day. Um, as the day progressed, I started getting an ache down one arm. How do you mean? You said you wasn't ready to go out for a cycle that day. Just, just run me through that feeling that day you had. Well, it was quite unusual because I'd go out whether it was rain, snow or, or hail. Um, but that morning when I woke up, something didn't feel right within my body. Um, I didn't have the energy and also I did feel like I, I was perhaps coming down with a set of cold or a flu or something like that. So you put it down to maybe just a little... I put it down to perhaps a bit of fatigue. Okay. Perhaps I've been training a lot recently. Maybe I've needed a rest day or an extra rest day. Okay, yeah, as we often do, make excuses when we just feel a little bit off weather. So yes. as the day progressed, um, what happened? So then my arm started getting a bit of an ache. Um, not pain, but just a bit of an ache. And Again, I felt a bit lethargic, a bit sluggish in my movements. Um, the pain worsened. My wife called up uh, uh, NHS Direct. They asked, could I raise my arms above my head? I could. They said, well, we don't think there's anything to worry about, but just to be on the safe side, take them into your local hospital to see out of hours doctor, as it was a Sunday, so our local GP wasn't wasn't available. We were probably an hour before we got to see the, the GP. Um, GP interviewed me, uh, didn't really examine me, had a bit of a discussion. They said, you probably pulled a muscle or maybe a trapped nerve, something like that. Go home, take some paracetamol, you should be okay in the morning. So you went home, obviously thinking the doctor said, Everything's just something, everything's okay? 
I actually went shopping afterwards. We went and done a food shop for the week. Um, on the way home, uh, I got the paracetamol as well. Um, and then we came home, we had lunch, we had family, family lunch. And after lunch, stood up, I was taking some plates into the kitchen, um, just clearing up after dinner. And um, at that point, I collapsed on the floor. Okay. And you, so you collapsed. What happened next? Um, it was a bit of a daze at that moment because I didn't know why I collapsed. Uh, I just, my legs went from underneath me. It wasn't a trip or a fall. I was just floored out. I was finding it very difficult to breathe and my chest was quite tight. So ambulance was called at that point? At that point, my wife called paramedics. They arrived pretty quickly. In fact, two paramedics arrived, um, one, one in the car and two in a van. Um, they arrived, they assessed me. As they came in the house, I was still on the floor. Uh, they got me to sit up and they uh, started checking my vital signs, which all appeared normal at the time. So did they take you to hospital at that point? Or? At that point, they took me back to the hospital that I went to earlier on that day. Uh, to get me checked out, as they said, just as a precaution. They didn't believe that there was anything to be concerned about because they had checked things like pulse and blood pressure. And they even ran an ECG as well and all of it was showing that I was absolutely fine. So when you went to the hospital, after the checks at your home, what checks did they do then? So I got to the hospital, the paramedics left me in the A&E waiting room and that, that, after they left, I then suffered another heart attack. I didn't realise that these moments of pain and uh, where I was dropping to the floor were actually heart attacks. It still at that point never occurred to me that this was what was happening to me. Um, after I collapsed on the floor of A&E, my wife persuaded the, uh, the, the staff that were in attendance there to take me into the A&E treatment area where they wired me up again to an ECG machine. At that point, some alarms went off where obviously I had another heart attack and um, the vitals were all over the place. Um, again, at that point, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, it wasn't explained to me what was happening at that point. Uh, the next thing I knew, I had an, another paramedic at the bottom of the bed saying that we're just going to go into the ambulance and go on to another hospital and we'll talk about it when we're in the ambulance. So the bedside, they, they still didn't tell you? Still didn't tell me at that point. I was still oblivious to what was happening. <clears throat> I was concerned um, because when these waves of pain was coming over me, um, it was something I couldn't handle. And I, I honestly believe that that was the end. Even though you didn't know what it was? Even though I didn't know what it was, because I was unable to breathe, I would, I would say that it was like a very, very heavy weight sitting on top of my chest. So I wasn't able to get air into my lungs. Um, and that made me panic. Um, I believe I might have even said goodbye to my wife at that point. Oh, wow. that, 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 that's just, at that moment, you just thought that might have been the end. I did. So at what point did you actually realise did they tell you you, ha you were suffering from a heart attack? It was actually in the ambulance. Um, they took me, on, I was still on a trolley already, a trolley bed. They put me in the back of an ambulance and as the ambulance was uh, leaving the uh, A&E department, I could hear my name and details being um, spoken over the radio as they were communicating with the hospital that we were, we were on our way to. Uh, they gave an ETA of 13 minutes. The sirens went on, the lights went on, and we were rushing through central London before you know it. At that point, they were putting uh, feed into my arm and they gave me morphine for the pain. It was after they, they, they gave me the morphine that they explained, you're actually having a heart attack and we're now on our way uh, to give you surgery. Um, everything's gonna be okay. Um, at that moment in time, um, I was actually calmer than what I was leading up to that. Perhaps it was the morphine, perhaps it was 
understanding that now action was being taken and I was in, I was in the hands of, of the uh, emergency staff. Unfortunately, my wife uh, didn't take it as well, so I found myself comforting my wife and saying, don't worry, honey, I'll be okay, no need to cry. Okay, that was a, a role reversal then. It so, certainly was. It was quite comical thinking back on it. Yeah. So they told you you had a heart attack and at that point it, it, it didn't ring massive alarm bells. At that point I was calm. Um, I was the calmest I'd been for maybe a few hours. Um, I didn't have any pain at that point. It was almost, it was happening to someone else. Um, it was quite surreal, and as I said, I was I was more uh, thinking about my wife's feelings than what was happening to me at that moment in time. So they took you to the hospital. Took me to the hospital. The doors opened at the back of the ambulance, and there was probably a team of I would say about half a dozen uh, staff there, all gowned up with their masks on, um, and literally through through some corridors straight into the treatment um, or the theatre. Um, it happened so fast, my, my wife was running alongside um, as they wheeled me through. Um, and there was a sudden realisation when they turned around to her and they said, you can't be in here. Um, that we realised, hey, this is happening now. Like, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be operated on here and now. And, and what type of operation did they perform on you? So they, um, they put a stent in to, one of my arteries was blocked by 99%, which was why I was suffering the pain. Um, so they put a, a, a thin tube of metal in to open up that artery and help the blood flow again. Um, all of that was done through keyhole and it was done whilst I was awake there was a, a big flat screen TV up and um, I watched the whole operation uh, as they were doing it, which again, it was, been surreal. it was so surreal. It was like I was watching a documentary on telly about someone else. It, it didn't seem it was happening to me. And I, was, I remember being quite chatty to the, to, the, uh, to the surgeons at the time as well, asking them what was happening. I was, I was intrigued, I was interested. As I said, it was like watching a documentary um, that it was happening to someone else. So you mentioned one of your arteries was blocked 99%. How about the other artery? There was another artery that was blocked 50%. They decided that they would leave that artery. Um, they would only stent the one that was blocked 99%. Uh, 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 no, that sounds serious. That sounds like if you didn't get that immediate attention, it, it, it could have had a, a really serious impact on... If the other artery blocked any more, then it, I probably would have gone into cardiac arrest, in which case I would have been out cold um, and I would have needed to be resuscitated. Um, the, the longer that uh, a heart attack continues, there's more chance of a cardiac arrest um, and there's more damage happening to the heart each and every time you get that wave of pain the heart's been damaged. With cardiac arrest, your heart's damaged even further. And um, heart cells don't uh, repair themselves. Um, that's something that happens when we're in, in the womb, that the, the heart's building itself once we're born. That's it, we're left with what we're left with. So, so it's very fortunate for you that, that when you had that pain, you collapsed uh, the, the second time, that your wife was here and you was able to get immediate help? If my wife wasn't um, with me at the time, I don't know whether I would have been able to get to a phone to have called help. And even if I had have been able to, I wouldn't have been able to open the door to let them in. Also, it seems as if your wife was quite persistent at the hospital as well, uh, uh, because not letting it go. So she was extremely persistent. Um, all through the day, through everyone that I'd seen, up until the point where they they were rushing me into surgery, I'd been kind of dismissed, almost as if it was 
a pulled muscle or a trapped nerve and I was making a big fuss over nothing. Um, I think because of my age uh, was why it was missed at that point. I was only 36 and realistically most people who are going to suffer some form of heart failure or heart attack would be into their late 50s, early 60s at the earliest. So because you were, you were young and you, you looked quite fit, they kind of, it wasn't on their radar to think about? Not at all. They didn't even consider it at that time. I now know that there's a simple blood test that can be done that can identify and confirm or deny if someone has had a heart attack. Um, but I only found this out many months afterwards with research after I, I started um, getting on the mend. How common is it for young men or young women around 36 age to, to have a heart attack? It's not common at all, uh, but it does happen. I've met probably about a dozen people where it's happened to them that are under the age of 40. It tends to be that men are more affected than heart attacks than women, but it's not, there's no cut and dry rule to say that it wouldn't happen to a woman um, under the age of 40. Is, is there any reason why it happens to men more than women? I haven't come across any reason why it happens more, more to men than women. But generally, even at a later age, more men suffer heart attacks than women. Okay. So you've had your operation. I did. You come out of hospital. Uh, how long were you in hospital after the operation? 48 hours. Um, I, was, I was actually climbing walls at that point. Um, after the operation I was put onto a ward um, and obviously the youngest on the ward. Um, it, it was very difficult for me at that time. Um, once the surgery had, had happened and I was left by myself, then I had my own thoughts. I was very scared, um, very down as well. Um, I couldn't move under my own steam. Uh, I needed to go to the bathroom, I needed to be assisted um, and to make matters worse uh, the, the patient in the bed next to me died that night um, and that was heart related as well so all these things was going on in my mind um, to the point where they had to sedate me to actually get me to sleep. So was you thinking about the possibility of another heart attack coming? I thought it was a certainty. Um, I, for maybe months afterwards, I believe that I could go at any time. It had happened so suddenly that even the slightest twinge um, made me think, here we go again. Uh, when I used to go to bed, I used to think, am I going to wake up in the morning? I didn't want my family to come home or to wake up and find me uh, deceased. Um, and that was four months forefront in my in my mind. How did it affect your mental state? Um, it was also? terrible um, for probably a couple of weeks after I was uh, released from hospital I cried constantly. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll freely admit it. It, it, it wasn't something that, that would happen to me beforehand. Uh, I could probably count on one hand how many times I cried that I could remember and I'm talking about through to childhood, um, but I certainly made up for it uh, from the two weeks after I got home. During those two weeks, you cried, and, and I cried buckets. And there's yeah. nothing wrong. Men cry too. Yes. So it, yeah. And there's nothing wrong. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why. I didn't know what was happening. Um, but I couldn't see light at the end of the tunnel. I went from someone who was being fit and running and uh, full of life to someone who was having to crawl upstairs on hands and knees. Okay. So you've had this life-changing circumstance, this heart attack. Thankfully, you've had the operation and yep. you've had some um, surgery. You come out of hospital. What do you do next? What, how, how did you see your life moving forward from that point onwards? To be honest, I didn't see my life moving forward. It was almost like I was, I was waiting for something to happen again. I was expecting something to happen again. I thought it was inevitable. Um, I had no hope for the future. Um, 
and I fell into a depression as a result. Uh, my wife tried helping me, tried speaking to me, nothing was getting through. I had plenty of visitors, plenty of loved ones around me. There was a lot of sympathy and empathy, but nothing was getting through to me. Um, I just felt lost. Um, it was after two weeks of me continuing in that vein, my, my wife contacted the British Heart Foundation. Um, she was at her wit's end. How can she help me, help myself? Um, and as I said, she got in contact with the British Heart Foundation and they uh, put us in contact with a cardiology nurse at our local hospital. Within, I would say about an hour, I was in front of that cardiology nurse. She dropped all of her appointments to see me. Uh, she spoke to me for probably two to three hours. She explained what had happened to me, what's going to happen to me, what I needed to do, and how my life could could get back on track. And that, that's an important point, what you needed to do. So after that conversation with that nurse, what did you realise you had to do in taking responsibility for your own health and future? It was simple choice. Um, I could either be a victim or I could be a survivor. Um, I chose the latter. Um, before that, I just thought of myself as a victim and uh, there was no way forward. Once I started deciding, no, I'm going to do something about this, I had something to live for. I had a young daughter, I had a wife, I had family, I had a lot to live for. I had friends. Um, I'd like to think of myself as a popular guy and I'd be leaving behind a lot of people if I didn't turn things around. Um, I was offered a, a six week rehabilitation program with the hospital in the cardiology department, which uh, involved um, nutritional advice, uh, it, it also took us into the gym once a week to um, build back our energy levels and um, our, our fitness as well. Because at that moment in time it was a struggle to walk. Um, and also medication was given to me and it was explained to me what that medication was, what it did. Um, and why I needed it. So you had to really make a commitment now, despite how you were feeling, to uh, adopt not so much these new habits, because I think you were kind of into exercising before, but after that low point, you had to pick yourself back up and say, you know what, I've really got to take part in my healing here. It was, it was worse than starting from scratch. Um, when I first started running, um, I wasn't a fixed person. But I wasn't as uh, I wasn't in the same state as what I was when I started rehabilitation. Uh, I was barely able to walk on a treadmill, um, and within six weeks, I was able to run five k. They really built me up within that short period of time, um, and a lot of it was positive messages, constantly telling me, "Look, go for it, push yourself, see what you can do." trust in yourself and trust in us we're here if something was to happen you're in the best hands and you're in the best place so take faith that you can do this and you can get better of course it's up to you if you want to do the work and i did well that's right because i'm sure there must be some people who have gone through that process and whose healing wasn't as rapid as yours and i think Yes, they pushed you, but I'm believing, looking at you now, listening to you now, that you had to also dig deep, and you had a, your mindset had a major part in your rapid healing. I had to believe that by exercising, I was going to build my myself back again, to be as strong or stronger than what I was before, um, and that was my goal. Before I had the heart attack, I signed up to do a triathlon and to do a half marathon. Um, I still wanted to do those things. They were iconic events. Um, it took 
that took me time to get to the stage where I was able to enter into those events and I wanted to get back to a stage where I could compete in those events. More so, I wanted to raise money for the British Art Foundation and awareness for other people to know, yes, this has happened, but there can be light at the end of the tunnel and you can get better. So after the, the major life-changing situation and the operation and the rehabilitation, you did you go back and, and enter into the triathlon? Uh, the triathlon I had to defer to the following year, which I did the following year and I completed it. And uh, I was very pleased with that. That was my first triathlon. Must have been a great feeling. Such a great feeling. But before that I did um, the Great North Run, an iconic event. I, I, from the time I first started running was something I wanted to do and six months almost to the day of having my heart attack I've managed to build myself up to the point where I not only ran that half marathon but I ran it faster than I ran a half marathon before I had the heart attack. So there is life after a major heart attack. I was actually stronger after. And then what you did, that's, that's one. And I, I think if I'm right you're also doing some work now because serving as an example for the British Heart Foundation, am I correct? That's correct. I've acted as an ambassador for the British Heart Foundation. Um, I've given talks. Um, I've um, also um, been on television and radio and uh, in the press, trying to get across that these things do happen, but if with the right mindset, you can get through it and you can come out the other side a stronger person. Okay, so a great story. Um, in conclusion, anybody who's maybe watching this, who may have had a heart attack, who, who or has a partner or someone in their life that has a heart attack, what is the message you'd, you'd leave with them? I would say reach out. Uh, the, the first thing that I learned was no man is an island. You can't do it by yourself. You need support. You need people around you who are going to be positive, push you through those hard times, and you will get through. And also, I think one of the messages that comes out to me is that you can have a heart attack at any time. It can happen to anyone at any time. There's not necessarily uh, any uh, reason given for having a heart attack. Um, so all we can do is try to mitigate it with exercise, with a healthy living style, um, but it can still happen, like with any illness. We can be hit with it, but it depends on how you deal with it. But you are a testament to, to what can happen if you put your mindset after a, a tragic incident like that, how you can bring your life back up to um, a situation like you, where you serve as an example. And I think that's a, a really great story. I think anybody watching this will definitely be inspired by your journey uh, back to health. I really do appreciate you taking the time to share your story uh, with us and I wish you continued good health, long and good health and, and, and may that heart attack never um, taint your life again. Thank you very much.